Hello, my name is Maxwell Ogaga. I'm excited to be presenting this particular session to you. And uh, I'm going to be looking at a very um, strong concept when it comes to the issue of finances. A couple of years ago, I was thinking, first of all, as a pastor of a local church, that I wanted the people who come to our church not only to experience increase, but to be able to manage their finances properly. And um, looking at the charismatic theology, I found out that when it comes to prosperity, one of the major things we've emphasized is the concept of just giving. And um, coming to realize and study the word and look at wealth models all around the world, you realize that giving is not the only way to be able to walk in the realms of prosperity, of wealth or increase. So I took some time uh, to study the subject and I came up with this book on prosperity and increase, the missing link. So I'm going to be sharing a few thoughts um, with you on this program and I'm trusting that God will use this to First of all, readjust your mindset where prosperity and increase is concerned. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is the fact that God wants us to increase. God wants us to prosper. Now, that does not exactly mean that everybody's going to be a millionaire. Everybody's going to have, you know, be a billionaire. But what that means is everyone can walk in increase. Everyone can be richly supplied. The first scripture I'd like us to look at is Genesis um, chapter 24 and verse 1. And I like what he said about Abraham. Genesis 24 and verse 1, he says, And Abraham was now very old, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. If you look at the King James Version, it says, And now Abraham was well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed him in all things. You're right? That's Genesis 24 and verse 1. That's the concept of what I call total life prosperity. He was well stricken in age. That means he was old. You know, he had long life. And then the Lord had blessed him in all things, in every way. The New American Standard Bible version says. So the first thing that anybody would want to, who wants to start into increase and wealth will have to get is the mindset that God wants you blessed. It's the mindset that God wants you increased. You know, many times we deal with this because of our experience, because of our environment, being raised in the African continent. We've been exposed to poverty. We've been exposed to lack. We've been exposed to struggles. And if we don't do a mind renewal, it becomes difficult. Okay, so the first place to access wealth is not just physically or cash. The first place to access wealth is your mindset. So if you if you, is your mindset, is the renewal of your mindset. You've got to know that God wants you to walk in abundance. You've got to know that God wants you to walk in the place of increase. Okay, because the Bible tells us that we should walk in the steps of Abraham. And we see here that Abraham was well stricken in age and he was blessed in all things. If you, if you don't have a rich mind, if you don't have a rich mind, you will not be able to experience wealth physically. All right, so the physical wealth is just, first of all, a manifestation of what is taking place in your spirit and in your mind. And so the, the first thing to do is to renew your mind where this is concerned, to know that God wants you blessed, to know that you can be blessed, to know that you can walk in increase. Now, having understood this, what are some of the key things, and I'm going to look at two key concept in this, um, in this first episode. What are, the, what are the key things we need to understand? I'd like to talk about the principle of frugality. The principle of frugality. Now, many times, especially in our continent, we see um, extravagance as wealth. Okay, so let's, let's, I'll give you an example. Somebody um, gets a raise, and the first thing they want to do is to change the apartment, um, they buy new cars, they buy new shoes, they buy things to show people that they are prosperous. But, you know, that's not the way to walk in wealth. That's not the way to walk in increase. All right? Now, you must see this. The principle of frugality is very simple. In John chapter 
6 and verse 1 to 13, you find a story there. John chapter 6, verse 1 to 13. This was when Jesus fed 5,000 people, you know, and he told the disciples to help distribute the food. And the Bible says that 5,000 people were fed. Over 5,000 people were fed with, two, with the loaves and the fishes. Now, what happened? At the end of that, Jesus said, let us gather the fragments. And when the fragments were gathered, 12 baskets were put together. You can imagine 12 baskets. In fact, they didn't start the miracle with one basket. What they started the miracle with was way less than that. Was way less than that. What does that teach us? It teaches us the principle of frugality, not to waste. Now, come, come to think of it, Jesus was God on the earth, right? God manifested, had all the miraculous power, had all the resources, had the backing of heaven. What was he doing with 12 baskets? Why was he telling the disciples to gather those baskets? He was trying to teach us the principle of frugality. Sometimes what keeps people bound in poverty is just extravagance. People don't have a budget. You know, a budget is not what limits you. A budget guides you. All right? So even as Christians, we've got to learn these principles of frugality. Sometimes, imagine some people will take a bottle of Coke every day, every day, and, you know, with some extra accessories, and they do this for a whole week. They do this for two weeks. They do this for a month. They become addicted to this. And what you find out is that resources is just wasting away. If you want to walk in increase, you have to learn the principle of frugality. You know, I was reading a book the other day, and the man was talking about, it was a minister of the gospel, and he was saying he was trusting God for some particular amount of money. All right? So he was believing God, let's say $1 million or $1 million Kenyan shillings. He was trusting God. And then he waited and waited, and at the end of about eight to nine months, he realized, well, I don't have this money. So he went back to God and said, God, I've been trusting you. I've been having faith in you for this particular amount of money, but I don't still have it. What's going on? And, you know, the Lord revealed to him and showed him all the little, what he would call little cash that came along the way. And he realized they all made up to one million. And what was, what was he trying to teach in that story? He was just saying, listen, you don't need to see the money in bulk. If you can track the little funds that are coming, you'll be able to gather what you're believing me for. And that's the mindset we need to have towards prosperity. If we want to experience increase, we, we need to block the leakages in our life. And these leakages could be things we like, um, money we spend that's not in the budget, that's unaccounted for. Uh, this could also be, um, you know, just, just excess spending, all right? You have a budget, but you always go above the budget. If you, if being frugal, it's not being stingy. Being frugal, it's blocking the waste around you, making sure that the resources that you have are properly allocated. Making sure that the resources that you have are properly allocated. So it's important that as believers we'll learn this, okay? Um, a man said that if little leakages in the ship will sink the ship. If you, if you allow your finances to just leak on without being accounted for, without being planned for, what's going to happen It's you're going to get into debt. So the principle of frugality is very key. Now, I, I wrote something here. I said, you realize something very strategic. What they had as leftover was much more than what they had to kickstart the miracle, the five loaves and two fishes. You know, there's often a negative mindset. When God starts increasing us, one of, the, one of the things we always want to do is to quickly, you know, spend. Now, one of the definitions of frugality, I like it. Frugality is the quality or state of being frugal, which also means the careful management of material resources. So frugality is more of management than being stingy. We're not saying hold back. We're just saying manage the resources carefully all right i read a scripture here in proverbs chapter 13 and verse 11. now Solomon was one of the wisest men that ever lived he had resources so we can learn a few things from him it says dishonest money dwindles away 
But whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Look at that. Whoever gathers money little by little will make it grow. Just as when you gather money little by little, you make it grow. It's the same way. If you allow little expenses here and there that are not properly accounted for, the challenge you're going to have is you're going to run into debt or you're going to uh, start working. You know, people become rich. People become rich. I mean, there's few people who are born rich, but the average person on the streets, the average person watching me would have to walk the process of becoming rich. And how do you do that? You gather money little by little and you experience increase with it. So it's important for us to understand that frugality is a vital aspect of work. Frugality is a vital aspect of work. If you, if you have increase, if you experience material increase, it doesn't mean automatically you have to just um, raise your standard of living. You could still maintain your standard of living and plug some more funds into investment and do some more things that can increase that money. You know, when we talk about the parable of the talents in the scriptures, we always look at it from the, the point of giftedness. But actually, that's the parable of money. Okay? The money was called talents in the, in, the old, in, in, in the olden days. And so Jesus gave, you know, in the parable, the master gave all kinds of talent, five, two, and one. But what did these people do? They went and they multiplied it. They multiplied it. They increased it. Whatever God puts in your life, he wants you to increase. Whatever resources comes to you, God wants you to do what? To increase it. So it's important for you to understand that God wants you to walk in increase. Now, I want to look at the second concept here of skills. Okay, so we're looking at four concepts essentially. So we've looked at the first concept. The first thing we said, just, just a quick recap, is the fact that if we want to work in increase, we've got to renew our mind where that is concerned. Okay? If we want to work in increase, we've got to renew our mind where that is concerned. And then secondly, we looked at the first step is frugality, the proper management of our resources. Okay? Now, the second thing we need to look at is skillfulness. Skillfulness. If you want to increase on the earth realm, you have to increase your skill. If you look at 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 16 to 19, 1 Samuel 16, 16 to 19, David was anointed as king. All right? David was anointed as king. But when David was anointed as king, what took him to the palace is his skill. It's his skill that took him to the palace. You know, there are many Christians who are anointed. We know that the, the Spirit of Christ is in you. You have the Holy Ghost. You've got faith. You're a, a, a church-going person. But your skill level is mediocre. Your skill level is average. Okay? You cannot walk in mediocrity and expect to be paid, you know, like someone who is extremely valuable. If you want on the atrium to have some resources, to have some money, you've got to look at your skill level. Now, I talked about First Samuel chapter 16, and then you realize something that happened. What took David to the throne was not just the anointing. What took David to the throne was what? Skillfulness. He became skillful. All right? And when Saul was looking for who to play the harp for him, to, they said, let's look for a skillful musician. They didn't just say, let's look for a musician. They said, let's look for a skillful musician. And it was that um, search for skill, that's where they found David. It's where they were searching for a skillful musician that they found David. Now, that took him to the palace. He was paid by the king. Now, that's what the Bible says. That if you see a man who is diligent in his job, he would stand before kings and not mere men. And many years ago, I thought of this, and I realized the difference between kings and mere men is that kings will be able to pay you enough while mere men will just say words to you. All right? If you sing so nice to a king, he'll reward you. But if you sing so nice to a mere man, he'll just probably just pray for you or just say, oh, well, that was nice. But you see, the Bible says, see thy man diligent in his business, skillful in his business, the Bible says. 
He would stand before kings. So one of the missing links we found a lot in the charismatic circle is people trying to walk in increase without improving their skill level. There's a level of skillfulness the world is ready to pay for. There's a level of skillfulness in your, um, in your field that make you come to that place where you would earn a lot. You've got to improve on your skill. All right. Now, it's important for us to understand. Let's look at... Um, the wisdom of Joseph, okay? When Joseph had the, when, when Pharaoh had the dream and Joseph was called, what happened? He interpreted the dream. He interpreted the dream. He, he was skillful in interpreting the dream. So he interpreted the dream in the prison and that prisoner recommended him. He interpreted the dream for the king and his reward was different, okay? His reward was different. So let's look at that skill of interpretation of dream. Joseph used it in the prison. And Joseph used it in the palace. So it's important for us to understand that whatever skills that God has given to us, as we keep exercising that skill, as we keep getting better with it, it brings us to a place where more people can, can look at us and place a demand. If you're a Christian fashion designer, be the best. Be the best. Be skillful in what you do. If you're into graphics, do amazing designs. Get skillful. The more skillful you are, the more people will place a demand on your gift and your talent, and the more increase you're working. Let's look at this. In 1 Kings chapter 17, there's a story there, verse 13 to 14. I'll just read it very quickly. It says, Now King Solomon sent and brought Hiram from, from Tyre. He was a widow's son from the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in bronze. He was filled with wisdom and understanding. Look at this and skill for doing any work in bronze. So he came to King Solomon and performed all his work. King Solomon had to send for this man. Why? Because he was skillful. So our skills determine who sends for us. So one of the things you need to do if you really want to work in increase is to do what? Is to go for skills get better. There's another story in 2 Chronicles chapter 2 and verse 7 and also 2 Chronicles chapter 2 verse 13 to 14. I'll just read that quickly. Um, 2 Chronicles 2 7, this is what the scripture says. Now send me a skilled man, pay attention to that, a skilled man to walk in gold. Solomon also needed a skilled man who could walk in gold, right? Now in verse 13 it says, now I'm sending Huram Abi, a skilled man endowed with understanding. It says he could make all kinds of engravings and to execute any design which may be assigned to him, to walk with your skilled men and with those of my Lord David, your father. You see, there was an exchange between these two kings, and what they exchanged was not mediocrity. I repeat that again. There was an exchange between these two, these two kings. And what they exchanged was not mediocrity. What they exchanged primarily was skilled men. So you've got to identify what, um, the, what area you are in, what, 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 what department are you in, what job prospect are you in, what career are you building. You have to identify that. Then number two, you've got to find out how can I improve my skill. Aim to be top 10 of whatever you're doing in that office. If you are up to 10 staff, aim to be at the top. Don't be comfortable with mediocrity. Don't be comfortable with doing a job that everyone else can do. There's, there's a genius on your inside. You've got to unleash it. You have to do things in such a way that when people say it, they are willing to pay so much more for it. The Bible is not against skills. The Bible is for skills. When you look at creation and you look at how God created the world, you will know that God is absolutely, amazingly skillful. And so the development of your skill is your personal responsibility. Nobody's going to do that for you. So you've got to take the time. You take the energy. You take the resources and invest in yourself so you can build up your skill. I said in my work, I said skillful men would always be in high demand. What skill? What is a skill? 
You know, the, the dictionary say, defines this, the Webster dictionary defines skill as an ability to, to do an activity or job well, especially what you've practiced over time. So one of the ways to improve your skill is to practice over time, to practice over time. You give yourself to practice. You give yourself to practice. So what you do, you identify the area of skill that you, that you want to develop, you find out what it'll take to get better at it. For some skills, you'd have to do a bit of reading. For some skills, you have to actually apprentice with someone, go to study someone, or right, have a mentor in that field. Have, and if you can, study from the best. If you can, learn from the best, all right? So it's important for us to understand that the development of your skill would have to take, it will take time, It'll take effort, it'll take energy, and sometimes it'll even take resources. What do I mean by that? For instance, you want to uh, develop a skill and you need to learn. Maybe take an online course or um, go to a specialized school for it, or even take some time, buy some bundles, some data bundles, and watch how that is being done on YouTube. For instance, you want to talk about public speaking, you could watch a lot of TEDx videos, you could watch a lot of videos where um, those courses, those subjects, those skills are taught. And you have to do it consistently, all right? In consistency lies the power. Discipline and consistency is the difference between your life now and the life you desire to have. I'll repeat that again. Discipline and consistency is the difference between the life you have now and the life you desire. So if you put in discipline and consistency and you practice that over time, you are going to develop your skill. If you go to Genesis 25, 27, I like the way Esau was described. It says, the boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. All right? Even in Exodus chapter 35 and verse 35, we discover that God put upon Bezalia the spirit to perform um, skillful work in every kind of bronze work. Oh, see, so when God wanted to even um, build the tabernacle in the wilderness, he gave Moses the design. The people that helped Moses to build were skillful men. All right, everywhere from a religious sector the government, the politics, whatever sector the Lord has called you to function in, if you're going to govern in that sector, if you're going to have dominion in that sector, the one thing you want to have is skill. The one thing you want to improve is your skill. All right? Proverbs 22, 29, we've talked about that. Do you see a man skilled in his work? He would serve kings. He won't serve obscure men. This is one scripture that gets me going. If I'm skillful, I'll stand before kings. It, it's almost like an automatic process that kings want skillful men to stand before them. I like the way the message translation puts it. It says, observe people who are good at their work. Skilled workers are always in demand and admired. They don't take a backseat to anyone. Wow, what an amazing verse. We'll read it again. Observe people who are good at their work. Skilled workers are always in demand and admired. They do not take the back seat to anyone. All right? So if you always want to be admired, if you always want to be in demand, if you want to be without, without a place where you're having to struggle through life, work on your skill. Go to work at it. Put effort in it. Okay? Sometimes the time we spend socializing, the time we spend doing all the stuff, all right? These are times we can actually focus and develop our skill and become better at our skill and improve our skill. Sometimes you have to humble yourself and go somewhere to learn. Sometimes you have to decide to read more. Sometimes you have to give more time to that development. But don't be content with mediocrity. Don't be content with not getting the best out of life. Don't be content with lack, with struggle, with poverty, with stagnation. Stretch your capacity. 
the, the human mind, the human spirit, as created by God, has the capacity to enlarge, has the capacity to do the impossible. So it's very important and it's very crucial that you're able to work on your skill to the level where other people are placing demands on your skill. All right. So if we look at the life of Daniel, we'll also find this um, from the life of Daniel. So I want to talk about very quickly what are the 10 simple steps for becoming more skillful. Number one, you must identify your area of skill. Not more than one or two. We're not saying become skillful in everything. Okay? Become skillful in one or two things. Okay? Number two, set aside part of your time to work and improve your skill. Set aside part of your time to work and improve your skill. If you don't give time to your skill, you will not improve in it. Number three, set aside part of your phones to improve your skill. Improving your skill will demand that you pay a bit of money, you learn something, you buy a book. Number four, practice your skills daily. Practice your skills daily. What you do daily, you become a master of. I always say this, that champions are masters of the basics. Champion are masters of the basics. So you practice your skill daily. Then you go about your job with diligence. What is diligence? Careful and persistent work. That's what diligence is. To be careful with your job, to be persistent with it. Pay attention to details, all right? Then number six, let the best in your field become your benchmark, not your friends. I think in the development of skills, this is very important. Let the best people in your field be the people you aspire to, not just your friends. Okay, sometimes your friends can be working in mediocrity and you're, you're good and they feel like, ah, oh, you're a very good person. But the truth of the matter is, if you would increase the benchmark, you'd realize that you're falling short. So let the best in your field be your benchmark for development. And then we must understand something. Skillfulness is not gender-based. Skillfulness is not gender-based. It doesn't have to do whether you're a lady or you're a man. If anybody decides to improve their skills, they'll get better. Number eight, do not surround yourself with people who have no appreciation for skills. The certain people who don't really care whether you're skillful or not, they're fine with the mediocrity level we're all operating with. Those people should not be in your close circles. Appreciate people, um, have people around you who appreciate the need for skills and who value skills and who, you know, praise you when you're skillful. You know, once you're affirmed for skillfulness, you would want to become more. But if people look at your skill and say, oh, you're just wasting your time. I don't think you should do this. That's going to discourage you and then you're not going to develop. All right. Nine, you can become skillful in any field. All right. Any field in this life, you can become skillful in it. It's important for you to understand that there's no field where you cannot improve your skill. And then lastly, no one can become skillful for you. I think this is very important. Skillfulness is not transferable, okay? You have to bear the responsibility for developing your skill. It's not something you can get from someone, you can learn from someone, but somebody cannot become skillful for you. It's personal responsibility. You have to assume the personal responsibility of developing your skill. The time you're wasting, the years you're wasting can be put into maximum use to improve your skill. And in the next episode, we're going to look at two more things which are the missing link to our prosperity and increase. I trust that you've been blessed. God bless you.